This is a rotary screw trap. It's a way that we capture downstream migratory fish like salmon and steelhead. And it um, sits in a, a section of the river channel where the um, young fish may be swimming by. And uh, as they swim by the trap, they're captured in the rotating drum and held in a tank up in the front of the trap. When we have a trap like this in a river, it's checked every day uh, to make sure that the fish are always okay. And oftentimes when we capture fish in a trap like this, in addition to counting the fish and maybe collecting some biological data like length and width, oftentimes we will tag them so that we can monitor their movements throughout their life. And this is uh, Holman. He is a technician for the Calpia Watershed Council and he's getting ready to check the live well. As you can see there is a drum spinning as the water flows through it and that is capturing fish that are swimming downstream and putting them into a live well where they're being held. Now these types of traps are checked every day to and, and sometimes even multiple times per day depending on how many fish are coming in. Uh, the fish are held in um, this uh, live well where they're unharmed until they're removed uh, from the trap by a technician. So Holman is placing some river water. He now has a battery-powered aerator that he's placing into the bucket uh, to keep the fish uh, oxygenated while they're being held. And this is a common method that fish biologists use to capture fish. Uh, in, and um, the point of this study is to capture steelhead that are migrating downstream on their way to the ocean and then they will be tagged um, a passive integrated transponder tag or pit tag will be placed in the fish and this is a, a device very much like is placed in your dog or cat so that it can find you if it gets lost and uh, the fish are then tracked and monitored as they swim downstream at what are called array stations and uh, when the fish swims by the array station uh, the, um, the pit tag is registered uh, in a computer and then we know where the fish is and when. We, we sometimes will recapture the fish and then it can be uh, weighed and measured again and we can determine how much the fish has grown. Uh, we get information from this on uh, travel time, how long it takes to get from one place to another, which is very important information in fish management. For example, there is a pit tag array station downstream at Willamette Falls and so far about 8% of the steelhead who have been tagged for this study have passed that array station and not all fish who have arrived at Willamette Falls are, are captured, uh, if you will, are sighted as we say. Um, it, um, so some could have gone by without uh, being um, logged at the pit tag array station. So. Um, that is why these fish are being captured and uh, this is the rotary screw trap and how we capture them. So this is a, a red side shiner and uh, they're very common native fish. Okay, and this is a lamprey amicete, 
or larva lamprey. It's, uh, it could be a Pacific lamprey or a brook. And they're a very ancient species. The, they've been around for like 300 million years. And they, uh, the Pacific lamprey is an adromus. It goes to the ocean. And as a larval lamprey, they tend to live in the substrate of the river, the sand and the mud. And the Pacific lamprey emerges to go to the ocean and then returns and to fresh water to spawn. And only spawns one time and then dies, just like the salmon. Okay, we have here a young large-scale sucker. This is another common native fish to the Willamette Valley. And they get quite large. They uh, live in the... Um, big river as an adult and then they migrate into the smaller tributaries to spawn and um, then they uh, can grow to 20-24 inches in length quite large they're very important native species they're a sucker they have the the mouth on the on the bottom of their head and they uh, scrape algae off the rocks so they're very important for water quality so that is a young, whoop, large scale sucker. This is a small trout, and um, we don't know if it is a steelhead or a cutthroat trout. At this size, it's difficult to tell until they get the characteristic orange slash marks on the chin. And, um, So it won't be tagged today because we don't know if it's a rainbow or a cutthroat, but that is a small trout that was caught in the trout. These are a couple of steelhead. They have been captured in the rotary screw trap from the Kalpuya River. Steelhead are also rainbow trout. They are the same species, Oncorhynchus micus, and the species of fish has two life histories. One that goes to the ocean and that's the steelhead and then there's the rainbow trout that lives its whole life in the fresh water and these are steelhead smolts. They're named for the life history where they're undergoing what's called smoltification to prepare themselves for going to the ocean. Okay, Mike is retrieving one of the steelhead from the bucket and he's placing it into a tub of anesthetic water. It, it contains a special chemical that makes the fish sleepy. It also is a, a pain reliever so the fish won't feel the, the tag. This steelhead here is beginning to um, show visible signs of the smultification process, that's the physiological changes that the fish has to undergo in order to live in the ocean. One of those changes involves uh, the fish's appearance becoming silver and losing its uh, camouflage colors from living in the freshwater river. Now Mike has just taken a genetic sample and uh, we're going to use that for uh, DNA analysis. Took a small clip from the tail. And this fish is uh, being a little camera shy here and hiding in the bucket. Thank you, Mike. You can see that the silver um, coloration starting to develop on the fish. And Mike is now taking a sample of the fish scales. And we're, we can use those to determine the age of the fish, whether it's two or three years old. Steel had a have a very uh, flexible life history. They can stay in fresh water for one year, two, three years, sometimes even five years before they become anadromous and go to the ocean. So now Mike is inserting the pit tag into the fish. You can see it was a very quick He's now uh, taking a measurement and putting it onto a scale to get a weight. Okay. 
and he's recording this now into a computer along with the pit tag number and you can see there's just that tiny tiny little black mark on the side of the fish and that's all in size of the incision and now the fish is going back into the bucket where there's a aerator providing extra oxygen while the fish recovers. This is what the pit tag looks like. That's all the bigger it is. And it's the same type of device that you put in your dog and cat at the veterinarian so that if your dog or cat gets lost, they can find you. So now we're going to release the fish. We've given them plenty of time to recover from their tagging. And there they go. Now there's one and he's just kind of sitting there. You can kind of see him. He's sulking a little bit. But he's gonna, he, she will be just fine. We always try to release the fish in a quiet area where uh, they have time to recover and um, relax for a little bit before they continue their journey onto the ocean.